Marshall Ferguson here for CFL.ca. Thank you for tuning in, football fans. I know it is a strange time, but we still have the draft to look forward to. And today it is the final edition of the Central Scouting Bureau rankings for the 2020 CFL draft. Let's take a look at the back end of the Central Scouting Bureau rankings, making the jump up from being not rated in September to 20th in December. Now finishing at 19th is Jack Cassar, the tackling machine from the Carlton Ravens. Another big jumper is Cam Lawson, who went from not rated to 15th and now finishing at 14th. And the biggest jumper in the back half of the Central Scouting Bureau rankings is Southeastern Louisiana defensive lineman Isaac Adeyemi Berglund, who jumps up five spots from December after being not rated in the first Central Scouting Bureau ranking. Now let's take a look at the definitive rankings in the top 10 of the final Central Scouting Bureau rankings. At number 10, it is Mason Bennett, defensive lineman for North Dakota. Now he drops two spots in these final Scouting Bureau rankings from December to now. I think a lot of that has to do not so much with him dropping off in performance. Obviously, we don't have a lot of numbers to go off of. But the idea that there are coming up in just a second here, two previously not ranked defenders who have jumped up into this top 10. At number nine, Montreal defensive back Marc Antoine Ducroix. No change from December until now. Ducroix stays as one of the more intriguing prospects in this draft. He's got returnability, he's got length, he's increasing his physicality, and he has speed to burn for days. At number eight here in the Central Scouting Bureau rankings, it is East Carolina linebacker Jordan Williams. Now, Jordan Williams was not ranked in September, not ranked in December, and now jumps all the way up 13 spots to finish at number eight overall in the Central Scouting Bureau rankings. Why is that? He looks every bit the part and he plays the game with a powerful tenacity, I think, that is going to result in him absolutely being a first round draft pick. After watching some of his game film, you can just see he's fast, he's angry, he gets to the football and he absolutely looks the part as well. I think that he is a home run for whoever has that fit where they'd like to go with a linebacker, immediate impact on special teams, and he'll add into your defense quicker than teams probably expect. At number seven, Ohio quarterback Nathan Rourke. He drops four spots since December. Now, I'm not sure why Nathan Rourke has dropped off a little bit here. It could be because maybe the pro day didn't go so great that he filmed and sent it to teams. It could be maybe the interviewing process. It could be lack of interest in the Canadian quarterback, depending on some of the other things stepping up, different positions, receiver, defensive line, offensive line. Or maybe it's just that there's guys making a move all over the place and Nathan Rourke slides backwards a couple of spots, but whatever team gets him, if he does not go to the National Football League, we'll be very happy to have the Oakville native. At number six, this one's really interesting. Michael Hoyt, Brown defensive tackle. Now he is 6'4", 290, and similar to what we just talked about, not ranked in September, not ranked in December, jumps all the way up 15 spots to be at number six overall in the final scouting bureau rankings. He is a two-year captain, a four-year starter, and for me, the way that they were able to access his skills was just scratching the surface at Brown. When this guy gets into a CFL training camp, he very quickly is going to become a game changer. It's amazing that he was kind of hidden for so long, but as evaluators shift through all of the names and all of the position availability and all the free agency in the rosters, they start to figure out who really matters and Hoyt is absolutely Rosen to the challenge here throughout the off season. At number five, Dijon Brissett, receiver out of Richmond and Virginia. Uh, he's been to a couple of different schools. The way that he is going to impact teams, I think, is going to not necessarily be the big play receiver right away. I think the expectation of a top five scouting bureau receiver is always, well, he's got to be able to score a touchdown every play. I think Brissett could do that over time. Right away, though, I think he's going to be a really nice addition, a good piece to a national receiving core. If he develops the way that he can with his athleticism and some of his size, other attributes, he'll be a really good player in the Canadian Football League. At number four, the Buffalo Bulls offensive lineman Thomas Jack Cardilla moves up one spot, started 11 games at right guard for the University of Buffalo this past season, helped block for an offense that had a school record 3,200 rushing yards and allowed a program low eight sacks as well. His pro day went pretty well and he continues to rise up the boards. At number three from the University of Alberta, offensive lineman Carter O'Donnell steps in, the top ranked U Sports prospect for the 2020 CFL draft. Why is that? Checks all of the boxes. He's my top overall pick in my first mock draft that came out on CFL.ca. He's got the size, he's got the ability to move very smoothly, he's got heavy hands, everything that you want in an offensive lineman to be able to be a difference maker. Again, you look at the success of championship teams, whether it's Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, Hamilton, otherwise that were very good in 2019, they had young offensive linemen who were stepping in and making an impact. Carter O'Donnell absolutely hits on all of that. He looks like he's probably going to be the top pick 
to the Calgary Stampeders, despite being at number three in the Central Scouting Bureau rankings. And that's because I don't know if we're going to see the top two players. At number two, it is Notre Dame receiver Chase Claypool, who has garnered probably the most interest and discussion coming out of the NFL Combine as the Notre Dame pass catcher absolutely blew up the 40-yard dash, showed off his size, showed that he could be a prototypical receiver, maybe not a tight end as some other people had thought he might be. Will he end up in the CFL? I'm not sure. If he comes here, he is absolutely a difference maker very quickly. And that's similar to our top overall player in the Central Scouting Bureau rankings, Neville Gallimore, a native of Ottawa, Ontario. Of course, by the way, of the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, he is a star. He is undoubtedly the top prospect in this draft, CFL. Uh, in the NFL, he's looking at being possibly a late first round, second round pick, at the latest a third round NFL draft pick. And that means, again, not going to be up here in the North, but if he does come North, you'd have to think the Ottawa Red Blacks would be worthy of spending a draft pick, maybe even their territorial draft selection at 19th overall on the very, very talented Neville Gallimore. For all of the coverage leading up to the 2020 CFL Draft, make sure that you stay tuned to CFL.ca for updates and more.